Welcome into the DNVR Avalanche Podcast. As the Avs beat the St. Louis Blues four to three, or should I say the Miko Rantanens? Uh, the Avs are officially a problem. That makes it seven straight, officially their longest winning streak of the season. Per Megan's tweet, their longest winning streak since March and April of 2022. Good year. Good year. Last time the Avs won that many in a row. I mean, it was nine in a row that time. So maybe the Avs can win two more. And it could be another good year in 2024. Uh, It was a weird game. Maybe I was just salty about it as much as anything. But the Avs won, so I shouldn't be as salty about it. Let's do the 60-second rundown. I actually thought the Avs deserved a lot better in the first period. They just failed to execute on some really high-quality chances. That being said, they do get on the board first as uh, Miko Rantanen. Pretty good at hockey, it turns out, uh, especially when he gets uh, fed pucks from high-end level players. But the Avs do end up giving that goal back on the other end. Not that that is that big of a deal, as Eric likes to say, even or better on the road. Good period. Uh, Do really think it could have been two or three in the Avs way in that period, but it didn't go that way. Second period was uh, far more wild. A lot more up and down the ice, a lot more high octane, and both teams trading goals the entire period, two apiece, one for Casey Middlestat and one, and a second one for Miko, and then Torpchenko and Braden Shen on the Blues side of it with some uh, some lapses defensively, we'll put it that way, for Colorado, and then four minutes into the third period, Miko gets the game winner, hat trick, goal, he's pretty good at hockey. Uh, We will get to Miko in a little bit, but I did want to have an overall conversation of the top line tonight because I wasn't sure what to make of them as a unit tonight. At times, it felt like they were the Harlem Globetrotters pulling (laughs) off incredibly high wire acts. At times, it felt like they were being lazy and turning pucks over. At times, it felt like they were working hard and getting in deep and digging pucks. So I'm curious what you guys thought of the Avs first line tonight as a whole. I'm looking at which goal it was specifically. It was the Braden Chen goal. Yeah. That was particularly poor. And if you look, there's interesting points of conversation because like you said, when the skill was needed, they came through with the goal scoring. Because it was necessary, you look at the high danger chances differential between both teams, and St. Louis was converting a lot of shot opportunities inside home plate. And a lot of them came against the Avs top line specifically. And... It's not that they're defensively perfect by reputation, but they usually don't make as many mistakes in their own end as I saw tonight. And I think that's what is the interesting thing about the game is they just allowed, especially like Jake Neighbors and who else was it that was just kind of eating them up in their own end. It it was though St. Louis's top six on the whole. Um, that was able to create more than we're used to seeing against the top line specifically. And so to that end, there were a couple of errors, a couple of high danger chances then that really challenged Juste Sanunin. But the team as a whole didn't necessarily play bad. And then obviously when the skill needed to be shown, like I love Rantanen's first goal, it comes about from hard work, honestly, from start to finish in that shift. And then... Obviously getting a hat trick from Ransom. He seems to play really well against St. Louis. I I don't necessarily have criticisms of the top line, but I also think that's why we saw Casey Middlestat taking shifts with the top line at points and Val Natushkin moved. Don't even necessarily view it as a demotion, just Jared Bednar's way to address something not quite working with the top line, particularly in their own end. Still a great game from the F stars. Like I don't want this to seem as if I'm coming down hard on them. Um, just maybe that part of their game in their own end was a little bit uncharacteristic of them. You want to have a good game, and then you don't play in your own end. Very simple. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's it's just, and, and 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 coaches and players know like the playground is in the offensive zone. The, of the, the defensive zone sucks. It just does. I mean, it's just not fun. And you know, and Miko and Nate are not great at it. There's a reason why. 
Because they never have to go down there, really. I mean, they usually have to, <laughs> they usually play in the sandbox. <laughs> they don't go back there. But the reason they, 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 they went back there more often tonight is they weren't smart managing their puck. You know, at, usually they control the blue line, the blue line, and get into the offensive zone. Tonight they were messing around and, you know, turning pucks over. It doesn't matter what league it is. You turn pucks over and cost Miko a couple, <laughs> I mean, a couple yep. bad ones tonight, yep. you know, but as a line, they did it. Then they have to go back, and then you spend your minute in your own end. It's not fun. Then you get pissy about it, and Mac, you can see, gets pissy. He's like, oh, wasted a shift in my own end. And, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, that's, you know, it's not fun to play in your own end. Um, and, and even when they talk about G and defending it, you know what? Then get out of your end quick, and that's why he does get out of his own quick. That's not his strength to go battle a 250-pound guy in front of the net. He's... Just gonna lose the battle. What are you gonna do? I mean, yep. that's what. He, but he's quick at getting the puck and exiting the zones quick and efficient. Uh, then you don't have to go defend. So it's like back then I used to block a lot of shots, and then Joel Sackett used to tell me all the time, "Well, you block shots because you're in the wrong spot." <laughs> he's right. I mean, it's, 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 I couldn't get there. You know, he could, and then he can get out, and then he doesn't have to play in his own end. But if you're stuck in your own end, you got to do what you got to do. So somewhere, somehow, like. Miko gets a hat trick. It's awesome. And it's the end of a road trip. It's a long road trip. It, it was kind of a weird road trip. It's a, you know, it's like lengthy for what it was. Um, very sure spread they had out. A, yeah. Very spread out. I had a couple of nice dinners in there for sure. <laughs> you know, I, team bonding and new guys. And so it was awesome. I did it. Now it's time to come home, get a day off tomorrow and get to work Thursday. You know what I mean? There's, there's no excuse Friday. It's a, it's a team you should murder. You know what I mean? And, you got that extra day, so my thought always on coming back home from a road trip, which is true. Well, it's not true because you have two days now. Yeah. So when you have one day, it's true. When you have two days, my not thought goes true. out the window. Yeah. And credit to St. Louis for the game that they played tonight. Highly physical oh, yeah. game that yeah. was pretty punishing. And you saw in some of the goals against getting out muscled at the net front yep. was something that the Avs also had to adapt to throughout the course of the game. So it was a hard fought game from St. Louis. Obviously coming into it, they are trying to chase Nashville and yep. won four straight. They had a lot on the line for themselves. And I think it showed in how St. Louis played this game. Let's be honest about it. The Avs winning this game probably ends St. Louis's playoff hopes, right? That was the hammer right there, I think. I think so, too. To them, this was a playoff game. Because you got to believe. It, so. you got to believe. And, and, and I think the Blues have believed the last, you know, week or so. You know, with those wins, it makes you believe. You're like, oh, my God, we're, we're all we're getting within striking distance. And then, and then it's a setback. Yep. You know, because someone's going to win, too, around that area. There's so many teams, right? Then you're like, oh, and then you go backwards again. And. Yeah, I don't know the score. Nashville's playing tonight. If they I win, thought they won, the, if the yeah, if they won, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's done. It's, it's like yeah. uh, it's like a hammer in the face. You know what I mean? You're like, oh god. So credit Eight to them. They worked hard. Two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It was four two last night. Yeah. yeah. Well, so just San Jose things. <laughs> well, yeah. Just I, this. I feel bad for whatever do you goaltenders in yeah. that tonight. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. You look at that clock every night, and you're like, Oof. and then you look at the next day, you're like. <laughs> When's our next game? There's how many days left days? in the season? Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it, I don't care that it's the National Hockey. League. It's tough. It, it it is tough sledding going to the rink every day. There is no ifs and buts about it. That is just a nightmare. I, I did want to talk about the rest of the Avs lineup. I don't know if I want to call it the struggle side necessarily. We talked about the top line, some some defensive struggles, or, or maybe at times. Poor turnover struggles in Miko's case. But then you also have the third line. You mentioned being out muscled for a couple of goals. First goal, Ross Colton gets lost in the defensive zone on what was a bad shift as a whole from that line. And then second goal, it's Zach Parise who just loses the battle down the middle. <laughs> they were trying things tonight. They had Miles Wood on the fourth line for a, a reasonable amount of the game. Brandon Duhame playing up on the third line. Are we just still in the experimental phase in the Avs bottom six at this point and going to have to live with some rough games? <laughs> Sorry, I'm only laughing because I, I think it brought out, I don't want to say the best of Miles Wood, but I do think it was a change that... The energy he, was there the for sure. The energy started to bring him a little bit more on track. He was taking away pucks and he was registering shots on net. Yep. Wasn't a perfect game, obviously, from any particular, maybe except for the Casey Middlestat line, actually. We're, Just we'll kidding. We'll get to that. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, it's like on the Nathan Walker goal specifically, that was a really bad shift, like from the unit before onward. Yep. Taves turnover, Duhame failed clear. Mm-hmm. And then that's when you see Paris say kind of, or not, sorry, Ross Colton is the one that gets lost yep. in, in his assignment there. Um, so the Colton line still is like trying to find its groove. And so that's what it feels like is they are still experimenting with some things because I liked what the fourth line brought out of Miles Wood tonight. Eric, I want to ask you as a player, you're in that situation with Ross Colton. How does how does that happen? How do you get lost on the ice like that where you just completely lose your man? And how do you prevent it from happening? It's funny you just asked that because that's what I was thinking right there. I'm like, oh, it just brings back memories. Like, <laughs> not you, good ones. I no, not good ones. Um, here's what I'll say. And yes, first and foremost, they are professional. They're the best at what they do. Uh but also that doesn't eliminate the fact sometimes that it is fast out there. Yep. We see it from an angle up top in the cameras. And, and when you're on the ice, I'll tell you one thing, like it is not the same view as on the camera. <laughs> you are there. And once you lose a guy, and especially the way the ass play in their own end, which is a little different. Um, I they try to put the, myself all the time. Just, I'm always I I I, I don't like it. It's Me a as super a, it's a handoff and rotation it, it is. heavy system. That, I don't like it. I would have had a hard time to uh, because maybe of what I'm trying to say, my peripheral vision or whatever it is. I would have had a hard time as a player to play their system, so it probably yeah. would have been traded. You know what I mean? So <laughs> this guy can't do himself. So I'm I'm you know it's not that easy. So then bodies are the same height. And it's like I said, it's a different view than what you see on TV. And then once you lose your guy. Your heart goes up, and you're tired, and then you're like, oh, shit. And that's why Colton goes back to the front. And, and that's what you're supposed to do because, I mean, what are you going to do? You're at least protecting the, the house at that point. Yeah. And then you're like, where's my guy? What's going on? And then you lose it for half a second, second. That's what you, this league just will kill you, half a second to a second. And then all of a sudden, you know you're in deep shit. And then you're like, oh, God. And then you're like, oh, shit. You know what I mean? Like, And then he tries to block the shot. It's too late. You know what I mean? So it's the worst feeling because once you lose it, it's not even the fact of looking at your partner or the guys, what they're doing is you got to find the guy. Yep. Where is my guy? You know what yep. I mean? <laughs> and then if you're right next to, let's say, Kel McCarr and you guys have one guy, you're like, oh, shit, that's me. Like, Where is my guy? And then, but it's in the back. So you're like, where is he? (laughs) And you turn this way, then he comes, you know, he comes this way. Right behind you. So it it is the worst (laughs) feeling in the world once you've lost your assignment and then you just try to, you know, okay, I'll I'll make up for it. And then, you know, unfortunately he did. You don't block the shot and it's in the back of your net. That's it. It's that simple sometimes. Hockey's a fast game. It is fast. (laughs) And on the ice, it's fast. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, look. I, I don't want to dwell on the negatives too much. No, no. But obviously, you would you would like better out of that third line than what you got tonight, and yeah. you would like a cleaner game out of your top line. But as Megan mentioned, Casey Middlestat, that second line, it, it seems to have coalesced rather quickly. Even if there are some moving parts to it on the wings, as we we expected, but Middlestat is not only. Fitting in on the abs, it's now a point streak that he's running. He is showing he can produce by scoring goals as well as setting them up. When you're looking at middle stat, how aggressive can they be with him? You saw a taste of maybe we throw him on the first line tonight. Like you mentioned, Megan, is this a guy who could be playing 20 plus minutes a night for the abs come playoff time? I think that was evidence in him being used in three on three overtime against them. True too. Yeah. There's some trust that's been immediately built. And then again, tonight in the four on four situation, he's out there, he wins that opening face off and yeah. he's not necessarily a face off guy, but he had a wonderful night at the dot tonight. And it was a situation wherein they did need that slight edge at the face off circle from him. And he won the draws when he needed to, to include his own goal, which is when you talk about yep. how fast of a game hockey is, that goal is made because Casey Middlestat wins that draw. It's true. Sam Gerrard immediately assumes possession. And then, of course, the skill takes over from both of those two. But it is just a testament to how the way in which he plays can match Colorado's speed. And he is already earning trust from a coach that I think is categorically hard to earn trust with. So being agree. a new guy, I think that bodes really well for Casey Middlestat. Casey Middlestat, like I, I can't say I was a fan of. Before you guys would bring him up, I'd be like, ah, eh, eh. 
you know, not a guy that I've been familiar with in the East. You know yeah. what I mean? But, you know, obviously you know him. And Why would you watch Buffalo unless but that's you have I mean. to? Like, you know, I'm always <laughs> kind of stuck in the West and, you know, like being with teams and looking at games. I mean, you. I mean, again, your job is to know the league. But, you know, what I'm trying to say is I wasn't that familiar with him. Am I impressed by him? Absolutely. I think it's outstanding. Now, here, here's, here's what I'll say about him. He gets here. This is what I think happened. Um, and I'm hoping that's what happened. His girlfriend, he's not married, right? You know, agent, parents, like management from the abs. Uh, Nathan McKinnon himself, hey, buddy, you got the best job in hockey coming up for the next few <laughs> years. You hide behind McKinnon. When I say hide is you are hidden in the lineup behind McKinnon. You get second he, parents. You buddy. get yeah. second, third parents. It's the best job in hockey. If you know what you are, if you know how to evaluate yourself. And I was explaining on you know, a video I'll see later about, you know, a rating of a seven of a pro is, is a franchise player, you know. Mm -hmm. um, some guys think they are franchise players, you know what I mean? And that's a problem. <laughs> uh, but this guy falls into a five or six. You know, it's yeah. just, he's, a, he's a top end player, not a franchise player. Right now, he's probably a five. A four is an average player. A five is 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 a better than that. Is a top six, you know. But this guy, you know, can be a six in a rating in the National Hockey League. And if 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 you looked at any scout around the league, I bet you if you look into the rink net, they would say he's a five dash six, meaning sure. he's a five. He's better than a than a regular, and he's got the potential to be a six. He never got to be a franchise player. That's why you're hiding behind the best job in hockey, Nathan McKinnon. So hopefully. That's what his mindset, and I read today, and he's been saying, I think it's our Twitter, whatever it was, like, he's so impressed by the pace of the practices. He's so impressed by the pace that they play. This guy, I say this about Tyler Toffoli all the time. He can't skate worth a lick, but he plays fast. So this guy's not the best skater. He's an okay skater. It's not hindering him. But he plays and he thinks fast. Yep. And when you do that, the game is so much easier. You're a step ahead. And and that's why he's fun to watch. But to hear him say that he loves the fact that the Avs play fast, that the tempo is so fast in practice, and it is a difference. When you are in Buffalo, no offense to Buffalo, not the city, the team, uh, uh, you're there, and the atmosphere, we say it all the time, you can be about winning or you can say you're about winning. There's a big difference. I don't think the Buffalo Sabres are there. But the Avalanche are there, having won 24 months ago, whatever it was, and they know what it takes. And your habits in practice, and your habits every day in the weight room, in the training room, your 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 demeanor is so important. And I think this guy's loving the fact that he's like, all right, this is what it's about. This is fun to watch. Here's what I'll say: the skill, I'm not surprised about with yep. Casey Middlestat. The fact that he's fit in so well with it is great. But what really sold me on him tonight isn't the goal. Yep. It isn't all the slick passing. It's on one shift. He has the puck. He goes into the blues corner. He loses the puck. I don't know if it's Pareko or he's just small enough that he makes someone look as tall as Pareko. <laughs> but he goes to battle with that guy and yeah. wins the puck back. He goes in and, and proves that he's not just all flash. right? Yeah. He can do the hard work that you need to do to be successful in something like a deep playoff run. And uh, that's an extremely valuable thing for the Avs to have. I want to reinforce that, and I don't want to derail too much, but I've seen early criticisms of the trade. And a lot of third-party or Buffalo-based assessments of it is that he is a little bit soft as a player and that he doesn't have what it takes to have an impact on a playoff run the way that you know we saw Byram obviously do in the 2022 year. And it's just not really a fair comparison, I think, one, because we haven't gotten to see what middle stat looks like in that setting. Yep. But I also think that there's this understated part about coming to Colorado and becoming a better two-way player because it's demanded of you. I think we saw it with Jonathan Druin yep. this year. And I think playing on a line with Druin and Lekkanen just reinforces those types of habits. And it's why he might not be the most physically punishing player, but I think that there's more to give in that, right? And we can kind of see a little bit of that tease in his game when he is playing with those workers. Yep. How do you use, not here to, again, Buffalo, God. Like I said, I love Donnie, <laughs> and I think Kevin Adams does a good job. And what I'm saying is the atmosphere that's created that's there is like, I mean, look back, like Ryan got 
ran out of town. You know what I mean, Ryan O'Reilly? And this is a guy with great habits and from when he was but, young to, you know. No, I'm sorry, there's a track record here. Ryan no, O'Reilly know, leaves, he goes, wins a cup. Jack Eichel that, leaves, he goes point. and wins a that's cup. That's what I'm like, saying. I, so when I hear like, oh, he wasn't good. Like, again, you're part of it. You're guilty. You're one of the 23 men on the roster. It's your job to bring a winning culture. Uh, but somewhere, somehow, like, when you get taken out of that culture and you get put up in a winning culture, then you, sometimes you shine. And I think that's what you saw with Ryan yep. going to St. Louis. That's what you saw with Eichel going to Vegas. And now you see this with Casey coming here. Like, it's nothing against the... But again, you can say you're about winning and you can be about winning. And I don't think they've been about winning in Buffalo. And I think that Casey fell into that. And it's like, oh, he's soft. And I'm sure there's games that, hey, love it, loved it. Trust me, it's tough, man. And then you come to the as you're straight up, and you're like, oh, my God, oh, this is, oh, yeah, oh. you know, yeah, you go to practice, and it's like you wouldn't dare, like, you know, miss a pass, or, so it's, it's, it's what it's created, it's, it's the environment that Avs on 1.0 had, and then lost their way a little bit, it's normal, you know, like Detroit had, and then they lost their way, and then they're trying to get it back, but the Avs got theirs back a couple years back, you know what I mean, and it's, it is, you go watch practice, it, they zip around, there's no messing around, and it's pass, it's fast, you don't miss a pass, and you, you go. And there's teams where you go watch a practice and you're like, oh, boy. Like, I wouldn't want to watch San Jose's practice tomorrow. Like, it's, not, it's going to be what I'm saying. Here. Like, oh, God, this is bad. <laughs> and it's just the culture. It's the environment. Yeah, it, it does matter. Uh, we did get over 100 likes in the first period of the show, so thank you very much, chat. Cheers, Dr. Dubs, vitamin W for you. We appreciate y'all. So... Would you say that Casey Middlestat has to find time to chill in Colorado? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> it's important. Hopefully he can find a few Coors Lights to chill with here in CO. Uh, go get yourself some Coors Light when you're chilling, enjoying the game. Or if you just need a moment at the end of the day to relax, Coors Light is the perfect beer for that. You don't even have to go get it. In fact, you can stay right on your couch and get it from CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Instacart will deliver it right to your front door. So you're when you're chill max and you don't even have to break the vibe to get yourself some beer. Uh, do it with Coors Light. Of course, they are our, he from here in Golden, Colorado. Uh, we love them here. You can't go wrong with the Coors Light. I do enjoy them myself a ton. The perfect beer to chill with. Uh, when it's time to chill, Coors Light is the beer I reach for. So when you want to hit that reset button, grab the beer that's made to chill. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with that CoorsLight.com slash DNVR. Let them know we sent you over there. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. And then when you got a beer in one hand, have your bet 365 ready to go in the other hand. Uh, jump on it with bet 365. Use the DNVR 365 code to sign up. When you do, you bet $5 on any NHL game, you get $150 in bonus bets. They're also going to have a ton of different March Madness bets and bonuses to get into with that stuff kicking off. CSU was winning by a lot last time I checked, so that's looking good. Looks like there will be at least one Colorado team in the big dance. We're going to be doing a ton of shows with that, too. So be sure to check in on our shows for March Madness, having some fun, making some bets, and then jump over with bet365. I Actually, it's probably too late. I think the money's not good anymore for McKinnon for Hart. I think he's like <laughs> minus 150 now you or something. Get in early. So if, that's on you if you didn't get in. But still plenty of other good bets to make. Maybe the Avs to win the Central Division is the is the new hot bet to make. Jump with it with Bet365. Of course, you must be 21 or older, physically located in Colorado. And if you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call or text 1-800-GAMBLER today. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast Bunch of praise for the Avs second line, but let's get into some specific three stars for tonight, starting with star number three. Maybe not as great a performance as some of the last games, but still, a Eustace Annanen that gets the job done for Colorado. This game never gets out of hand because of him. He's always able to keep it with Aiden one at worst. There were some easy decisions about giving Eustace Annanen another start after some of the great games he played. Was tonight a good enough job to consider giving Annanen an extra start or two down the stretch here? I think so. 
Oh, you know, as I mentioned at the top of the show, St. Louis created a lot of high danger opportunities inside home plate. I think Colorado usually defends a little better against those Mm -hmm. Um, that really challenged him. And so I think it sort of clouds the overall picture of the night because what matters is he won the goaltender matchup against Jordan Bennington at the end. Straight up won it. And so I do want to see more from him. I did still feel a confidence with him in net. You know, there's a lot of penalties in this game. The kill was also excellent, and it ramped up throughout the course of the game. But to start, I think that St. Louis was creating a bit more on their first power play opportunity. And Yusuf Sandinen did hold it down. So I have just built more confidence from a game like this and do want to see more of him. Yeah, I love him. I mean, that's – he just (laughs) needs – there's a book out there um, by Joey Dakar's dad, Brian Dakar, that's – Enjoy the core of the goalie in Seattle, but Brian's got a. And if you're listening and your parents of a goaltender, young goaltender, you should get that book. I don't remember what it's called, but it's, you know, just Google Brian Decor goalie book. There's one book out there. So, but it talks about the one thing that you can't uh, teach and, and it starts. I mean, you can say all you want about everything, but, but if you don't get starts and you don't get reps, like, <laughs> It doesn't mean anything, you know what I mean? So you have to be able to, and that was the thing with Eustace. They just didn't have starts for him. They just didn't, for whatever reason, they, they just, whatever they were trying to do at the start of the year, that's not for us to judge. And, you know, they, they went and got Prospetov and put him in there. What, there must have been a plan behind it, and who knows. Didn't work out in the sense that all of a sudden Eustace got hurt, and maybe the plan was to come back, and then he wasn't there. Next thing you know, you get to the deadline, he's got eight career starts, and you're like, there you go. I don't have the starts. Now, how do we judge him? He has no starts. You know, we don't know what he is. We can assume, and I think we all like him, um, AJ included. And and I do believe he'll probably end up being better than Georgiev, you know, one day in this league. And because, you know, he's, I, I just like his um, his movements. And, you know, I, I again, he's raw. He's He's young and he doesn't have a lot of starts. But... Right now, I think the plan with the deadline was like, hey, you know what? Screw it. Let's give him some starts. Let's see where it goes. And that's what they're doing. And they're sticking to their plan. And then he's getting some starts. And on this road trip, he ends up getting two, right? You know, that was two? Yeah, out of four, right? So, again, could you play him again Friday? Maybe. You know, Columbus, why not? I mean, I'm just saying, I'm not saying they will. I'm saying there's going to be opportunities, you know. And I, I think they're sticking to their plan, even if he would have faltered where he hasn't really faltered lately. He's been good. And St. Louis is a tough building to go in. It's a loud building. You're on the road. Uh, your teammates are tired a little bit. You know, it's been a long road trip, and you don't know how they're going to react in front of you. And we saw that they weren't perfect tonight, but he played a good game. So I thought it was awesome to to watch them give him that start, to watch him perform well enough to get the start. And I, I think he's well-deserved of having a start tonight. It, just to touch on it really quick, Yes, there are two back-to-backs that he will almost certainly start. I'm talking about a couple of extra starts on top of that that he could get. And the Avs have been pretty honest with with playing him. On this run near the end of February to today, plays Detroit, a team in a playoff spot. Plays great, even though it's an overtime loss. Gets two games against Chicago, which are pretty easy ones, but he literally shuts them out twice, so can't Mm -hmm. play any better. Gets a Calgary team that's probably on the outside looking in. Plays very well. And then gets a St. Louis team that's probably on the outside looking in. Plays well enough to win. Yes, it's a small sample size, but this is not him skirting around picking up 5-4 wins over teams like San Jose. This is him winning real hockey games against quality NHL competition. So, is he a starter today? No, let's not be crazy about it. But he's very quickly earning that backup job if he can keep it up. Yeah. A hot St. Louis team. A Four in a row. Calgary team. I don't know how to, like, I don't know what qualifier to put in front of Calgary. They're, they're a weird like, team. Yeah, yeah. But, like, it's not <laughs> middle Chicago. Of the road, middle of the pack team. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> those, are, those are good games, and he should feel accomplished. Yeah, absolutely. Number two, part of that second line with middle stat we were talking about, Jonathan Druin picks up a multi point night for him, which I think puts him over 40 for the season or at 40 for the season. Uh, a 40-point guy for less than a million dollars. Not a bad move by Chris McFarland. Drew himself looks fantastic. 
I do still wonder long term about the fit with him next to Casey Middlestat, but certainly for both of them, they seem to be energized in. Oh, I actually have some skill to play with here. This is kind of fun. I, there's a million things we could talk about with Drew and immediate impact is slotting into the abs top six and, and being effective even while separated from Nathan McKinnon. Right. Yeah. I, 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 he, I think he's fit in nicely. I think he likes to play whether I think he gets to get his cookie on the power play, which is again, the play like tonight, that, that that's, that's, uh, you get yeah. you get to get another cookie next game and next game because you're you're delivering what you're supposed to do, you yeah. know. And AJ called him at the start of the year, Picasso. What was it? Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Shakespeare yeah. Shakespeare. You know. So he makes plays that way that other people can't make. And but what I like about him is his bite away from the puck, which I'm not familiar with. Which I would have been the first guy to tell you that come playoff time, this guy's going to fold, and you know. I'm not gonna like his game away from the pocket. Fold like the what? Like I don't know. Like fold like I don't know. Kind of like a cheap tent. <laughs> no. I was making a French joke. It's oh, fine. Well, okay, sorry. <laughs> no when to hold him. I mean, um, I just thought he was gonna fold him and not like. But I'm really impressed on the stretch right now, and I think what it does is the competition that brought in too, as in the lineup, it it just pushes everybody to play better, and it does, and it's like. Guess what? If you're not really there right now, Casey Middlestat will gladly take your spot on the power play. <laughs> so, but it does. It it just pushes you, you know, a little bit. Like, oh God, I better be ready. And I and I like what I've seen, especially on this road trip. I've noticed that we all have noticed that he's got some jam to his game, and he's willing to play a real playoff style type game. You know, which I didn't think he had in his bag. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think he had it. I haven't seen it since his time in Tampa Bay, yeah. which is six, seven, eight years ago now. So yeah. Yeah, Drew and his uh, one of the biggest wins of a Chris McFarland off season so far. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think back to our early pods on this. If we even imagine him on PP one, probably we not, might have, but I, I don't even, I am like cringing a little bit. I think Ryan Johansson might've been in our PP one plans at one yeah. point. And it makes sense though. Because he is converting on um, the power yeah, play for them because of great. his high IQ and his vision. That's honestly like Mika Rantanen should give him a really big hug at the end of the game because <laughs> that power play goal is made possible from terrific vision from Duran. Yeah. That is not to say Rantanen didn't put himself of, in the right place course. either. But I think that seeing what that type of vision can bring to the Avs top players is another reason why Metal Stat was targeted because of the similarities between both of these players in their playmaking ability. And it, it, it's really impressive that Colorado has managed to build the top six that they have. It, given you end last season and you essentially go into this off season with your entire second line is a, is a question mark. I guess you have Lekkanen if you're putting Nachushkin on the top line. You have a center and a wing that you need to solve on your second line. And you go out and do it. Yes, it takes till the trade deadline to get Casey Middlestat, but it, there's a very different world where if the Avs don't succeed in making moves like Middlestat, if they don't get value in someone like Drew in the offseason, that we are not in this place where we are pretty high on Colorado at this point in the season and, and heading towards the playoffs. Instead, they feel like a well-oiled machine right now, as already mentioned on their longest winning streak of the season. A lot of things have fallen into place since trade deadline day for Colorado. Drew in before that even, though. So credit where credit is due there. Number one is, of course, the guy who scores a hat trick tonight. Miko Rantanen, the moose himself, getting the first star, making me have to pour a glass of water on myself in my review tonight. Uh, Miko's such a weird hockey player. <laughs> Because he can float through games at times. He made some bad decisions that directly led to avalanche goals against tonight. But he gives you three goals, including the game-winning goal in the third period. So you just, you can't, I mean, you can say, yeah, he did these bad things. But at the end of the day, he won you the game. He's, he's, he's the most important player on the ice for the Avs tonight. Because he's just that good. 
He could have been the most important player for St. Louis tonight, too. <laughs> One way or the other, he was going to be the most important player. I'm only kidding. But, like, <laughs> the Braden Shen goal, the penalty. Yep. It could have been it risky territory. It could have gone that way. It could have. But it didn't, and he got a hat trick. Yep. He is such an interesting player that I adore. <clears throat> he's, uh, AJ just texted me earlier, and he's like, because I said, Miko hat trick with a gazillion turnovers. I mean, <laughs> yep, accurate. And he goes, Yeah, he's a savant. You know what I mean? That's what he texts me, you know? And it's like, he's right. But here's what I'll, it hit me during the night tonight because I saw something on Twitter and I think the Az were asking at practice yesterday to do, who's your favorite teammate, you know? And then guys are, you know, if I'm walking with Rudo, it's like, oh, Rudo, you know, whatever. And Tiff and Megan are walking. It's like, oh, Megan, you know, normal, like, you know. Yeah. But it hit me, ranting and walked by, and he's like, he's got a little presence. He's, he's feeling a little confident. Like he's, and he goes, Ananen Kiviranta. So here's what I'm seeing. He likes fins. Got yeah, it. Here's what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm seeing him like, and I remember Peter Nedvin, uh, awesome teammate back then, and Rangers, and we had a lot of Czech kids, and we, we called it the Czech Mafia. And, and Peter Medved was the godfather, you know what I mean? Because that's just what it was. And this is what I feel that it feels like. Miko's the godfather right now. He's got, he's got Eustace, and he's got Kiviranta. And it makes a difference for those Europeans that are here, and they have some guys from their, you know, their countries. And, and you can see that he's feeling pretty good about it. I'm, I think he's liking, uh, obviously, his line mate, you know, Nathan McKinnon and guys mm -hmm. like that, but he's also liking it away from the rink right now with a couple fins with him, and, and obviously there's like an into and you know, so there's four fins, and it makes a difference. Like, I, I'm just telling you, and this, it just hit me tonight, and I was like, all right, he's the godfather right now, and he's he's enjoying his, his posse, you know what I mean? And I think he's playing that way lately. He's, you know, being confident, and he's uh, he's making the big plays. And, and like we said, he's not perfect because he's, Hey, listen, when you're that big and you play 25 minutes a night, you're going to make mistakes because that means you have the puck. Yep. You know, guys on the fourth line that don't play much, they don't really make those mistakes because they don't have the puck, you know? So it goes hand in hand. And, and I think it's a totally fair argument. You look at the goal against on his turnover high in the offensive zone. That's too yeah. cute. He just can't be doing that. He sure. Knows. You know. That's a problem. But yeah. for a guy that we've talked about at a lot of stretches of this season, you're a lethal goal scorer. Shoot the puck. This four-game road trip, Six goals, 15 shots on net. Yeah. If the Avs get that version of Miko, who the Avs top six is really, really, really good. Yeah. <laughs> he's going to get 100 points. What's he at? Uh, I don't know. Let me see. I mean, he's freaking close. 93 after tonight. Okay. So he's going to get 110. Another 100 uh, on his way. Good. On his way. Yeah. Pretty good. Speaking of which, Nathan McKinnon also kept his point streak alive tonight. <laughs> which I think he gets it early and then also yeah. a long road trip. All right, let's see what the boys are. He, uh, he didn't have his best game. You know what I mean? And sometimes it's kind of like, I'm not saying you play for points. I'm saying it's human nature. Like, oh, my streak's alive. You know, all right, we're right there. And then, oh, it's Miko's night. And, you know, carry on. I love to see McKinnon like battling one of his own point streak records made yep. within this season. Yeah. <laughs> the 19 game point streak from earlier is now rivaled by this 16 game point streak <sighs> in Avs Nordiques history. Yep. It's kind of unbelievable this season that McKinnon is having. I won't even say quietly. I think it's starting to garner the attention. The noise it deserves. is building for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Definitely noise. It, I've said it before, but it's it's worth reiterating. You are watching maybe the best season, regular season in Avalanche Easy. history right Easy. now. He's what, five points I away agree. now? I agree. Like, I agree. It's hard to argue with. I agree. You Just gotta, can't let go of the past. Mm -hmm. Well, if he puts up 140, you're going to have to let go, buddy. <laughs> uh, Good thing. He's just... It's it's awesome all time stuff. Enjoy it while you're getting it out of Nathan McKinnon and the rest of the Avs forward core. To be honest, it's it's a fun group to watch every night, even if it is frustrating at times. It's a team that you're starting to believe it, when they need a goal, they can get one, no matter what the scenario might end up being. Uh, on
On that note, though, we are brought to you by the folks over at Premier Members Credit Union. The Avs have invested in their future with players like McKinnon and McCarr and Casey Middlestat. You can also invest short-term in players like Jonathan Druin, which fortunately Druin's probably priced himself out of Colorado. But Premier Members Credit Union has your back when it comes to what you're doing with your money. They're not a bank, so that gives them a ton of different options for what you can do with your money, whether it's getting a 5% APY on your first $2,000 that you put in with them or a ton of other options, including uh, their reverse tier money market. That's a thing. I know words about banking. Don't trust me. Trust Premier Members Credit Union when it comes to your money. They're all about creating a better banking experience for their community, and they have the tools to help you save smarter. When you become a new member, you get $200 from them just for opening a checking account and signing up for e-statements. That's all you have to do to get $200 deposited right into your account. Uh, it'll be your best money move yet. Head to becomepremier.com to find out more today. And then when you got a little bit of extra snack money in the back pocket, take it over to Circle K. Get yourself some delicious snacks, whether it, uh, it be their Picho rings or their gummy worms or their gummy bears or their, I'm just naming all my favorite snacks from yeah, the, the Circle K. Sour gummy worms. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so, so good. good. Uh, when you do it, make sure you get Inner Circle rewards too. Use that QR code on screen or go to circlek.com slash inner circle to sign up today. Just for signing up, you get 25 cents off a gallon, your first five Phillips of gas, a bunch of amazing snack deals, and even up to five free Polar Pops when you go in and claim your reward. So again, use that QR code on screen and become part of the inner circle today. Third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast, just to kind of wrap up some of the conversations that we have been having Found the Chushkin, another guy in the top six who quietly has a multi-point night tonight. Was it his best game of the season? No, probably not. But the Avs have proven every one of their skill players can step up at any given moment in any hockey game. They win the special teams battle, as you guys talked about, both by getting the power play goal, but also by having a fantastic penalty kill, which has continued to be, I guess not continued, but is quickly becoming a trademark of this team with the new additions. No one solved them yet on the penalty kill. That's obviously not going to last forever, but do you think the abs have sustainability with this core of a quality penalty kill? Yeah, I think they have more options than they did before for players to rotate in and out. And it just makes Night's a little easier for the Val Nachushkins because he is being utilized in every situation. Yep. Takes a little bit of the load off than his role on the penalty kill on the whole. So I think that the type of players that they sought out at the deadline all PK. Well, except for Casey Middlestat. But you never know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I won't write I won't rule it. Yeah, I don't know. He, he's fine. So, anyways, all that to say, they have more options. I don't see any reason not to. Obviously, it is a huge loss to lose Logan O'Connor, but they did replenish with between Trennan and Duhame yep. and then Sean Walker, of course, getting some looks as well. They replenished more than they lost. Yeah, I mean, it's. I think they're well equipped right now, and I think this postseason is going to be indicative of what I think was an outstanding trade deadline. So, I'm with they you. don't do it. I think they're in trouble. You know what I mean? So I think they did what they had to do, which is not easy. It was well planned out, well, well, well thought of, and, and it worked all great. And right now we're seeing the results. But again, you're judged in this league. Who's the last man standing? Who's the last team excited that won the last game? So the Avs are in that category. We'll see what happens. You know my favorite phrase, just play the game you're in. <laughs> That's it. If you win the one you're in, you're going to go far. That's it. Uh, Fourth line, too, Megan, I think it was you that was talking about it. I don't know if it was in pregame or when, but the ability for the Avs to roll those lines a little bit more, especially in a night like tonight where it wasn't perfect. Your top line got the job done in the end, but at times we're, we're struggling to find it a little bit. Third line a little all over the place, but you can drop that fourth line out there and they'll go give you a quality shift in whatever zone they happen to be starting in. 
So credit to them as well. Even, I, I don't know, are, are we just calling Yakov trending the center now? Are we just officially there? It looks, it looks that way. Okay. Yeah, we see. Whatever you want me to be, Coach. That's what I'll be. Fair enough. And he's able to do it, and yeah. then go do it. I'm, hey, look, it's working. So no complaints from me on, on that front. Uh, personally, uh, would still like to see a little bit of production from the Avs depth. Uh, I get it. They're figuring it out. It's not a high on the list of problems or anything, but you're not going to get a hat trick out of Miko every night. I'll put it that way. No, they paid Miles Wood a lot of money. They did. And it wasn't to be a bona fide goal scorer, but I think they were expecting a little more production and understanding that he's been battling illness. I'm not going to say that this was some kind of failure. I still really like his fit in Colorado. He's just someone that I think has a little more to give alongside Ross Colton. Yeah, looks currently on pace to come up shy of 30 points. No. You'd really like him to hit that 30 point milestone. But then you know but. what? I think it'll make a difference because the pace that he in the playoffs, yeah. it's going to be huge, right? The right? You know, yeah. not it's, saying he's no, 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 a you know, I agree. I'm not saying you were saying anything. that. I'm saying I think you get him for the playoffs. That's that's why you got him. And I think that because he is reckless and he is chaos and he is fast and I think it's just going to on a on a seven game series, I think he'll he has put it this way. I don't give a shit how many points he gets <laughs> if he does the job. If he's doing the other yeah. things. All right. Fair enough. No argument there. Yep. Uh, that's most of what I had. Did you two had anything else you wanted to touch on in the hockey game itself? I guess shout out Sam Gerard. That pass to middle stat was sweet. That was a good pass. It's a, it's a big road trip. It's a big team win. It's a confidence builder. We all know they've been shaky on the road this year, so this was good. You know, they, they went into some some tough buildings. They went into some... St. Louis was a hot team, won four in a row. I mean, that's it's it's a tough game mm-hmm. on the road, fourth game of a road trip. So, you know what? It gave them confidence, gave them a boost. Fun to watch, fun to see. Get home, take the day off tomorrow. Put a day's work Thursday and be ready to go at that trap game Friday. I think it's something we forget a lot of the time, especially us as media members where this is a job and you, and you do this. Watching hockey is supposed to be fun. <laughs> and the Avs are really, really fun right now. It, it's not the best games of all time. They're not dominating everybody, but the hockey is fun. They're finding ways to to make really fun hockey happen on the ice. And just thought it was worth noting. It it's a an, fun road trip. It was a fun road trip. Edmonton game was awesome. They look super like locked in for the entire trip, to be honest with you. They look like a team ready to to make the push. Put it that way. Uh, when you are ready to make the push. Oh, did I switch reads halfway through? Whoops. Oh, well. All right. Well, either way, go get yourself some Illegal Pete's. Enjoy yourself a delicious burrito uh, with Illegal Pete's. And get in on one of their 12 locations now. They just opened one up in Wheat Ridge that you can get out to. Their happy hours are from 3 to 8 p.m. If you want to get in on that extremely long happy hour, great place to pregame. If you're coming down to the DNVR bar, there's one just a couple blocks from the bar, which you're going to want to get down here. A lot of fun action going on right now. Like I mentioned, a bunch of March Madness stuff. Obviously, the Avs and Nuggets ramps to the playoffs and the playoffs themselves. Uh, Illegal Pete's the play to the place rather to uh, be as well as the DNVR bar. Uh, you can also get in on our DNVR bracket challenge with Illegal Pete's totally for free. Uh, prizes for the top three finishes include diehard memberships, uh, shirt and gift cards, as well as Illegal Pete's gift cards. So a bunch of fun stuff to win between us and DNVR and Illegal Pete's when you join the bracket challenge. Uh, go join us on that today. Then, as mentioned right there, Great time to become a DNVR diehard right now. Obviously, it supports us directly, which helps out a lot. Please, if you like us, consider supporting us. Uh, do that. But also because it gives you a ton of perks, including discounts on merch, discounts at the bar, access to some of our diehard-only content like the DNVR Discord, where you can talk with a bunch of other Avs fans, access to a roundtable that we just came out with recently, as well as a bunch of other content that we are working on, uh, whether it be prospect looks or playoff stuff. ton of it will be on DNVR's website. That is the DNVR.com. And you might need to be a 
diehard member to access some of it. So consider supporting us. It really does help us out a ton if you guys do want to become a diehard. We have three super chats from the chat today. $5 from Candle Jack, who says, Eric called a run like this during the Avs struggles early in the season. Loved this road trip. LFG boys, we're officially a problem. So seven, yeah. right? Huh? Seven, because every time I seven. say, oh, they're going to do their 10, you yeah. know, guess so they'll what? They'll go nine and one or they'll 10 go, and they'll, they'll go yeah. stretch, they'll go 10 and all. You have to in a season, usually in every Stanley Cup winner, usually you look back, there's a run there. Yeah. And I think if this is their run, then it comes at the right time. Problem. At the I, problem. problem. <laughs> Candle, it's a prop. I love this name so much. And we said eight was an avalanche, so there you go. They're, they're just themselves. At that point, <laughs> even uh, even then. Uh, and for the record, I know it's not exactly a 10 because this was the nice game, game 69. But in their last 10, the Avs are 9-1. and one. There you go. So uh. it is that run. $5 yeah. from the Schick who says, It seems like ever since Miko took that late penalty against the Leafs, he's been on a mission. I really thought this game was a little bit squirrelier, squirrelier than some of what we've seen over Miko over the last little while. But yeah, Miko has clearly shown up and once again proven that when he wants to be, he can be one of the best players in the world. And this is the fourth game of a trip. And trust me, you get in the elevator today, like after morning skiing, you're like, which, which floor am I on? Where which do I live? Am I in? <laughs> it's tough. Who, like, which it's, team do I play for? You don't know where you're going. You better write it with a Sharpie on your co where you're going, like what, where your room is, because you don't remember. And, and it, trust me, it's, it's, it's a long, it wears on you, yeah. a long year. Yep. Uh, and then $5 from Matthew, who says, holy crap, is Miko officially in playoff mode? And holy crap, is Mitzi R2C? Mm -hmm. I, I saw the chat talking about it a little bit earlier. I did just want to clarify. Uh, Middlestat is an RFA, and the reason the Avs play, traded Bo and Byram for Middlestat is because they get to keep Middlestat around. They will sign him to an extension no matter what, basically. Yeah. So this is the guy. This is going to be the Avs 2C for the foreseeable future. The Avs are committed to The number Middlestat. will work itself out. Yeah. It's all good. So not that it's hard, but get used to it because you're going to be seeing a lot more of that guy doing a lot more cool stuff. Uh, that's all I got. We good. We good. One more thing. Go for it. One more thing. And again, I don't know this guy from this cup right here. Like Adam, Adam Henrique. Yep. You know, almost an ab, right? I mean, if you're going was, by the rumors, there were and conversations. Stuff, it, was, yeah. it made sense. He was a. He would have been a good fit here. Go, go watch the clips on after hours. I think on hockey night this past weekend. And again, I don't know him, so I'm not advertising for him or whatever. But you watch that and you forget that guys are human beings. And and he broke down because they were asking him about the trade. And this is a guy that knew was going to get traded. It was in a shit team in Anaheim. And he's a UFA and, you know, wants to test the market. So, but you got to remember, he's married. He's got his young daughter. He's like a two-year-old. Then he had a baby eight days before the trade. Yeah. Wow. Hey, it's hard. A lot going but on. It's yeah. a lot going on. And then poor guy, he started, he just broke down. Like when he was talking and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do this. Guys are human beings, and when you change places, you trade places, there's an adjustment period. So, you know, there might be a little adjustment period for, for Walker or Middlestad or, you know, uh, or Trennan and Duhame, and it depends. I, I don't know them either. Are they married, have kids, or, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it makes a difference. Everybody reacts differently. And But you know what? The environment is so important, and I think the Avs have a great environment. I think they have a great team chemistry where you know if somebody feels that you know they're they're struggling a little bit you know what i mean from a change because it is a change i've told you it is a change like it's you don't know where to sit on the bus you don't know where to go in the lager you don't know where to stand you don't know who's whose seat is that at lunch who's that you know what i mean so it's non-stop and those are just things away at the rink and then there's a there's a, there's time away from the rink where you have your own personal life so anyway if you have a chance just go look it up and adam Enrique like after hours on Hockey Night in Canada was awesome. It was awesome to see, like, I'm not saying it was awesome to see a guy cry. I'm saying it was awesome to see the raw emotion of a guy changing teams. You know what I mean? At the deadline. And some of the realities. He went, and he went it, from yeah. a terrible situation in a sense, and I'm shitty this year. Then he goes to Edmonton that some are picking to come out of the West. So, but just to show you guys are human beings sometimes. Yeah. So it was a good one. I do like that note about the environment in Colorado, yeah. too. 
seeing the walk-in video that the Avs posted today, it was a whole bunch of them arriving off yep. the bus at once. And you could see a smile on Wood, Colton, mm-hmm. and Sean Walker's face. And it was just nice to see yeah. that they are probably bonding over this road trip. Yep. And it's maybe the best thing for these new guys yep. to have that opportunity to start gelling with their teammates as as friends and yep. like something of an extended More than family. Just co-workers at that point, yeah. Yeah, I like to see that. Yeah, it- Vibes are real high right now for Colorado, but we are going to wrap up this show. We do have off day shows coming to you tomorrow. Uh, we'll probably look a little bit around the league Thursday, old friend Evan coming or Wednesday. No. Yeah. Thursday Thursday. days of the week. Get me every time Thursday, old friend Evan coming back on the show to talk about Nikolai Kovalenko. So (laughs) for everyone wanting the Kovalenko update, that's the show for you guys on Thursday. We appreciate all y'all hanging out with us tonight and we will talk to you all tomorrow.